If you want Colts talk all year long, you're in the right place. Fires upfield into the end zone. It is caught. Jelani Woods. Touchdown. He's going to fire upfield. It's broken up. Tip and intercepted by the Colts. This is the official Colts podcast, giving you an updated look at what's new with the horseshoes. Colts have it. Interception. Two seconds left. And the Colts are going to win. In the Indiana Union Construction Industry Radio Studio, let's get the podcast started. Welcome in to the Colts Official Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Win Las Vegas. Joining us on the couch, a little bit different lineup. I like that. Yeah, J.J. Stankovitz, he's always here, Colts.com senior You had senior to get writer. off the couch. I, I'm off of that couch, bro. I mean, Lara's coming back sometime. I don't know what I'm going to do. I may double up next to her, and you can lay down why, on why, that couch for her. Why don't you want to be on the couch? It's just not comfortable he hates for the me, couch. Bill. I'm just, it, there's a difference thing. I don't know what it is. It's not specifically this couch, Bill. No more coach talk after this, I promise. Not couch, but coach talk. Or coach talk, but not couch talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's uncomfortable, and I sit there, and I'm fidgeting the whole time, and then people are ripping on me on the YouTube, and thank you for watching today and stuff like that. <laughs> so I'd rather be – I'm going to bring in my own chair if, if, if this thing doesn't work for next week. Is it going to be a recliner? I, it may be. I need okay. to get comfortable on this. A lot of questions going on today. <laughs> Obviously, a very happy building coming across, a divisional win at home for the first time in eight games or whatever it is, winning one, but – I'm going to go out in in the drift a little bit. I'm going to take this tide out with us a little bit and veer off of what happened on Sunday and bring it back. I know it is a little sports talk radio, but I was asked this question the other day and it brought back some memories. My first jersey. And I'm talking about my love for the NFL. And when we were at that age, Bill and I are over 50 years old. I mean, I have my reader glasses ready. You can see that. JJ, a lot younger than that. So I'm interested to find out what is this thing when it comes to Owning a jersey, the first one, and I'll go first. It was Terry Bradshaw. I was a Steelers fan living in Michigan. The Lions just kept losing and losing and losing. But I saw the Steelers. I saw Lynn Swan. I saw Stallworth, Chuck Knoll, and everything. Love Bradshaw. Came home surprised jersey, and then I whined like a couple of years later. I want a Franco Harris jersey. So I ended up getting my only two jerseys ever bought for me or I bought in the NFL were Franco Harris and Terry Bradshaw, which dates me a little bit. But I want to bring that to you before we talk some Colts football. So mine, I can picture it right now. I can still picture it in my drawer in my house in the Chicago suburbs. It was a kind of a knockoff Brian Urlacher jersey. Nice. Like not the authentic one, but the one that – you know, you get at Kohl's on kind of the discount <laughs> rack. Uh, was not an actual jersey, but it wasn't a jersey. It was jersey material. Yeah. It definitely was not an official thing. Wear it to thing. school and stuff? Oh, and yeah. Had your day time. in it? Yeah. The, the only official NFL jersey I have ever had bought for me. Mm-hmm. This is so dumb. So the height of the Bears, 2005, 2006, 2007. You know, everyone at my school had Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, Devin Hester, and I'm like, I'm going to be that different kid. So I asked for and got a Bernard Berrien jersey. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Berrien? Wide receiver, war number 80 on the Bears, career high, 951 yards on 71 catches in 2007. But this was before that. I was still in high school then. So he had, he had like a 700-yard receiving season. And I'm like, that's the jersey I want so I can be different. And I can be that cool kid who's walking around like, look at me. I'm not like everyone else. And now, boy, I should have just got just that Devin kind of Hester a, jersey. Yes. One and done, kind of a one, one-hit wonder out of, out of Barry in? Or? If that. He got a pretty big contract from Minnesota, I think. No one tuned into this podcast to hear about Bernard Barry. No, they did. <laughs> but they did tune in to find out about Anthony Richardson and the Colts. But when you talk about but, the well, Colts, no, 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 you, you got to talk Bill? about the Ring of Honor member, Bill Brooks. But you guys, JJ, you and I are fun when we answer the jersey. <laughs> team. This this cat actually played in he the league. He actually had a jersey. He had a jersey for himself. That was made for him. So it's a huge difference when you talk about athleticism and being, being great at football. Bill, I'm just curious. Was there a jersey when you were on, before you started your football career? Was there somebody that you coveted? When I was young, you you hurt my my heart when you said the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers because I was a Dallas Cowboys fan. Okay. So my first jersey was a Roger Starback jersey. Really? Yeah. Roger Number Starbeck, twelve, right? Number twelve. Yes, with the star on the side of the helmet. So I, I I enjoyed the jersey. It was a nice jersey. Wore it. Didn't wear it to school. Didn't have an opportunity to wear it to school. But I wore it around the neighborhood all the time and just hung out with that jersey and. It was fun to wear it, you know, because I was a big, big Dallas Cowboys fan, you know. When they Were had, you at BU as well? 
Uh, Did you, I mean, no, you could have went to the Cowboys it, coming out of college, yeah, out of Boston I, actually, University. Actually, I got worked out with from uh, by one of the guys that I looked up to from the Dallas Cowboys, Drew Pearson. Really? Drew Pearson worked me out at Boston University. I so, love it. So that was, that, that we... was fun. That was a big uh, big moment for me to get worked out by Drew Pearson, someone I looked up to and uh, really admired on, the, on the Dallas Cowboys. Why not? I love it. Bill Brooks, I, you know, those are great. A jersey out of you. I mean, the <laughs> Fugazi off. jersey shorted and sort yeah, of knock yeah, off, yeah. and then that's a great one. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have stupid questions sometimes, and that was one <laughs> that of them. Stupid. That, that wasn't a stupid question. I wanted to bring back this some off. good memories. Yeah. Absolutely, JJ. I know your fingers on the pulse. We all know about this thing. I got to start with the big elephant in the room. Where are we with number five, Anthony Richardson? So, as of Monday, Shane Steichen said the Colts are evaluating him for an AC joint injury in his shoulder. That comes with different grades of you could be one through four. The Colts are still evaluating the severity of it. I know there's been some reporting out there about the Colts already have an idea of the severity of it. I am not sure that is the case. They're getting opinions on it. This is the throwing shoulder of your starting quarterback. You are going to exhaust every single medical option and avenue to figure out what the course of recovery looks like. So the Colts have not figured that out yet. We will know more as the week goes on, whether that means Anthony Richardson goes on injured reserve or not. That may happen. What does that entail, by the way? Is that four games? That would be four games. If if Anthony Richardson goes on injured reserve, he has to miss a minimum of four games. The question then becomes, obviously, you know, the Colts have these next, what is it, five games coming up where you have Jacksonville, Cleveland, New Orleans, Carolina, New England, and then the bye. So what does that look like? Can Anthony Richardson return in that stretch? Uh, If you think he can, then maybe he does not go on IR. If you think he can't, then maybe you say he goes on IR, he comes back potentially after the bye. We also don't know if this could be even more severe than a couple of weeks. We don't know if it could be less severe and cost him a game or two. We do know Gardner Minshew is going to start Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is as far as we know right now into the future. All right, this will be fun. He's going back to play uh, a team that, you know, he had some success with, Bill. Yes. And, 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 you know, we're talking about Anthony Richardson and what he's doing, and, and J.J. brings up a good point when it comes to uh, off, the, off the air that was. It's like the style that it takes to survive in this league, especially at that position that every all eyes are on you at the quarterback position. Is there a style of play, guys, that Anthony Richardson has brought to the Colts, and we know his skill set, that does involve a lot of running with this guy's game. Is there possible something going on with first five games through the year, hasn't finished one, that they start saying, hey, it's a protective league, number one. you got to do what you can, but more importantly, your availability is the best ability. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they'll look into that. I mean, that's something they want to look into as far as, you know, what Anthony Richardson does. One of his strengths is running the football. I mean, you have to use that to your to, to your advantage um, when you're an offensive coach, offensive uh, savant out there so you want to use his uh, skill set to your advantage so they're going to have to find out a way to balance in that so they can have him use that strength of running the football giving another weapon to your offense but also throwing the ball but more importantly making sure that young man stays healthy because if he's going to be your franchise quarterback you want him around for a long time so you want to make sure that he can stay healthy so they're going to have to balance that it's going to be a tough tough act to to try to balance because Man, he's dynamic when he does run the ball. JJ, is this about luck? Is this? I mean, is it, we know what his skill set is. We, we've seen it. He's he's a mismatch when it comes at two hundred forty plus pounds and speed that he has. Is there something going on where they're going to say, "Hey, we we can't have this sort of play on the field because we need you in week 16. I'm glad you. I'm glad you kind of had maybe a Freudian slip there. What was it? You said, "Is this about luck?" Right. Oh, it's, okay. it's not. Oh, it's oh, not. Oh, okay. Um, th- this is. We are not going down the same path the Colts went down with Andrew Luck. No, no. That is not what is going on here. I know Colts fans understandably have a little bit of trepidation about this kind of stuff. But to me, this is about a rookie quarterback figuring it out in the NFL. Rookie quarterbacks, they all have different learning curves and different things they have to figure out in their first year in the NFL. Whether that's reading defenses, learning how to manage getting the plays in, learning how to just manage the week-to-week mental load. I think what we've seen from Anthony Richardson is that he's pretty good at reading defenses. He knows where to go with the football. That's been impressive so far. He's you know handling the mental load really well. Maybe this is the thing, protecting himself. 
that is the learning curve he has to manage in year one. That this, and it's happening pretty quick for him. But I mean, you, there is no way he is okay with having to exit three of his four starts because of injuries. There is no way he he thinks this is sustainable and this is okay. So now what are the conversations like with Shane Steichen, with Jim Bob Cooter, Cam Turner, this entire coaching staff, the front, you know, everyone involved who's invested in Anthony Richardson. I don't think you can take away his running ability like we're talking about, but you can have him run it maybe a little bit smarter and figuring that out. This is a guy who maybe this is where his inexperience was showing up a little bit, that he only started, you know, a handful of games in college. He's only started a handful of games in the NFL. Now you're figuring out getting down in the NFL and protecting yourself is highly important. It's not a bad thing to do. But you look at, I mean, you look at what Shane Steichen did with Jalen Hurts in Philly. In 2021, Jalen Hurts ran it 139 times. In 2022, 165 times. So in the two years. How many games did he miss last year? Remember? Gardner came in, had a, two had games. a big, big, big game, I yeah. remember. He missed two games two each games. season. Yeah. But over the course of Shane Steichen's time with Jalen Hurts, he ran the ball 304 times for 1,544 yards, 5.1 yards per attempt. That is really good. That it's is also, a weapon. That also shows that's a staple it is. of Steichen's right. offense. offense. It is. Exactly. That's part of his offense. That's part of him being so smart and being a savant out there in regards to the offense, and him being out there to help these guys to use their talents for the betterment of the offense. I'm he, telling you, I, th- this is the fun thing about this. I remember the day, the day, J.J., you and I are talking about Minshew when he got signed here. And arguably, this guy, we're going to be looking at him for the next couple of starts, knock on wood, that's it, and Anthony comes back. But arguably, this cat is the MVP of this year. It starts in OTAs, I'm saying, the way that he ran the show when these guys were just starting to get familiar with each other and familiar with Shane Steichen. Hell of a year up to this point for Gardner Minshew. Yeah, I was talking with Ryan Kelly after the game about this, and and he made a a comment about how what really kind of – endeared him to Gardner early on was like that that mini camp the Colts had in mid April mm-hmm. before Anthony Richardson was drafted before the Colts before anyone knew the Colts were going to take a quarterback maybe you had an idea but before it was confirmed hey Anthony Richardson's the guy's coming into the building that he ran that like hey I'm the starter I'm going to be the starter and that's how you have to operate in those situations. Yes. There was no gray area of like, yeah, I'm going to be the starter this week, but next week we're going to take this guy. Right. There was none of that, and that's not how Gardner Minshew has ever operated. Even going into training camp where he was flipping between Anthony with the ones and the twos and the offense there, he prepared and played like he was com- going to compete to start for this team this season. And even though he didn't get that opportunity coming out of training camp, there was never a wavering in his mentality of – all right, well, I'm the backup, or I'll just kind of fade into the background. Like He has been an asset to this team as the backup, as the number two guy when Anthony's been out there. And then when he goes out and he plays, I mean, this guy is just tough out there. He is, he's nailing throws when he needs to get in there. He's staying in the pocket. He's making tough throws. He's making good decisions. He's not putting the ball into harm's way. He's everything you want in your number two quarterback. And for him to now be the number one for you know a couple of weeks potentially – you feel pretty good about this team's chances Bill, in a competitive been, AFC South. You've been in those locker rooms, yes. and you know quarterback switching. I mean, you know oh, yes. if the if the locker room, and correct me if I'm wrong, if that locker room believes in this guy, and in this case I'm talking about Gardner Minshew, no worries, no speed bumps. I know you got a superior athlete in Anthony Richardson, right. but again, if that team is behind that quarterback, anything can be done. It, it, you feel good about that, and that's what you want from your quarterback. You want your quarterback to go out there in the huddle and display the confidence out there that he has in – executing the game plan, going out there playing, say, hey, look, I am the starting quarterback right now. I am here. I know what I have to do to get this team to move the ball down the field. I have a command of the offense. I know what I'm doing. I've been in this offense for a number of years. So, look, this is how we're going to handle things. And when the other teammates, your other teammates see that and in the quarterback, you have confidence in him. Hey, you know what? This guy, he's confident out there. He's going here and playing football. And I love to see Gardner out there in the football field. You know, he walked out there the other day like – yeah, this is, this is fun. We're going to have fun, guys. We're in the backyard playing. I'm going to run this offense. We're going to have fun, and we're going to execute, and we're going to move the ball down the field. And when, and when and, he and, wins, boy, oh, boy, you see oh, him in man. the locker oh, room. Oh, That's he's excited. Great. There's nobody in the it. NFL I like that. It. I mean, yeah. it really is special yeah, to watch Minshew come in, do what he does, and then have the love of that locker room after a victory. Oh, that's fun. I mean, it, it, it's nothing better getting into that locker room knowing that you battle with your teammates out there to get a win, and then you see Gardner out there just – 
being excited in the locker room like he's a little kid out there just playing. And that's what we talk about, a little kid, our jerseys. Right, right. That's, that's a Gardner Minshew playing in the backyard to me. I mean, you know as a player, Bill, like you know who's good and who's not. And you can, you know, you can lie about it to the media. You can talk, oh, you know, this guy's great. Like, this team really believes in Gardner Minshew. There is no, you know, protecting your teammate, even though you kind of know in the back of your head, this guy's not really cutting it. There's none of that with Gardner Minshew. And the proof is now out there that in the three games he's played significant snaps, the Colts are 3-0. Mm-hmm. and And it's not just that, hey, this guy's pretty good. We like playing with him. It's, hey, we're winning with Gardner Minshew out there. And now we're going into this game against Jacksonville that – you know, maybe he'll downplay it this week. We'll see. But it's probably a little personal to him that, hey, I was a pretty good quarterback right. for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they just chipped me out. Like, you know, and they, even in that 2020 season where they benched him for Mike Glennon for reasons I'm still not sure about. <laughs> um, like, he he was a good quarterback in Jacksonville. He's going to be hot this week. You know uh, I, mean, I mean, he'll be fired up look, to go it, back it, to Jacksonville. It's always special. Oh. I, don't, I don't care who, what the athlete may say. It's always a yeah. little special going back, playing a team that you played with uh, in your career. So it's going to be special for him to go back to Jacksonville. I love it. I want to get into a lot about this football game. But, J.J., cr- props to you for coming up with a, with a segment that we call can, we call can't, we call won't. And I want to start there with the running game because yeah. – uh, Wow. Jonathan Taylor came back. We heard the crowd. We heard everybody excited about it. All their fantasy players across the league. I'm playing Taylor today. He's going to go crazy. Uh, if you listen to the, you know, the stuff that we put out on the air, it's pretty accurate what we said. You know, he's going to get a few touches here and there and a few plays on the field, and that's exactly what we saw. So can, can, or won't. How does this mesh between Zach Moss, who is playing high-level football that people across the league are looking at him and his play as running back with Jonathan Taylor coming in the mix. Can, can't, or won't this keep up with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, mm-hmm. and that means Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss. Yeah, I think, I think in a sense it can keep up, but it's in the sense that Shane Steichen can ride the hot hand. Mm-hmm. That you can give the ball to Zach Moss 25 times in a game where he is just gashing the Titans. I mean, getting that 56-yard run for a guy who supposedly wasn't an explosive runner, that's pretty good. Not bad. Showed some explosiveness <laughs> there. Um, by the way, shout-out to Quentin Nelson for his absolute pancake hey, was, of yes. a block that on that play. Special, We're going to get into the O-line here in a little bit. Uh, it was pretty good to see. But Jonathan Taylor, I mean, like you, you look at what he can do and what we've seen out of him. When he gets going, man, does he get going. And maybe there's going to be a game where Jonathan Taylor gets 25 carries because he is gashing the opponent. He's got 175 yards at the end of the day. You have both these guys who have similar but different skill sets. Zach Moss is the guy who you give him the ball and he can turn a three yard gain into a six yard gain because he's going to keep moving. He's going to keep churning his legs. He's going to spin off guys. He's going to do all that stuff. Jonathan Taylor's the guy who can turn a three yard gain into a 30 yard gain, into a 60 yard gain. What do you need that week? And you can absolutely balance it out to where if the game if the game script calls for early on, we're going to give the ball to JT and he gets hot, go for him. You know, you're good. If the game script calls for we're going to give it to Zach Moss early on and he gets hot, give him the ball. Go for it. And this is as good, I think, as the Colts have felt about their backfield in a really long time because it's it's not like you have two guys with different skill sets. Like JT and Naheem Hines had different skill sets. Yes. This is kind of what the backfield... I think Lara brought up a really good point on the Overtime podcast we did on Saturday. This is kind of the vision the Colts had for their backfield in 2020 when they drafted Jonathan Taylor and pair him with Marlon Mack. Two guys who you can ride the hot hand a little bit, so you was, you know hitting it at the start of the game and go from there. Now you can do that and you have two guys who are established. Zach Moss is getting his opportunity and he's making the most of it. After not really getting it in Buffalo, Jonathan Taylor, we know what he can do. Yeah, you should feel really good about what this backfield can do this year. I like the best, I like this because it's the best of both worlds, in, in my in my opinion. You have two backs and you ride one of them hot hands. The other guy is kind of resting, not getting the hits that he might get during a game, and then he's going to be fresher down the down the road and, and later on in the season. So you can ride both these guys. You know, as, as JJ said, have Zach Moss. He has the hot hand. Let him run between the tackles, be that force, the physical force is to pound and pound and pound. Okay, next game, you know what? Jonathan Taylor has a hot hand. He breaks a, a three-yard, what we call it, a three-yard game, maybe into a 40-yard game for a touchdown. You rest the other guy. Later on in the season, these guys, you know what? Other teams are, are down. Their other teams are tired. They're banged up. 
we got two fresh running backs That's what back I'm saying. there. Yeah, you know, and the you fresh, can run and, yeah. you, and, you, and you can use those guys. So I like that. You know, use the best. I think we have the best of both worlds think, you know, with those two guys. Think in 2021 how beneficial it would have been to this offense to have a Zach Moss, where Jonathan Taylor led the league in rushing by 550 yards that year. End of the season, slowed down a little bit. That wasn't necessarily his fault. There were some other things with the offense that weren't going right. But JT took a lot of carries that year. Yep. Even if you took 50 of those off his plate and gave them to a guy in Zach Moss who you trusted to go out and play at a high level, maybe that would have helped this team. I don't know. How Just tough. How tough is Zach Moss? Oh, I mean, Come off that arm uh, injury that he coming. I mean, playing that position, yeah. these guys are teeing off on you, and he's just, ah, I can't wait to get back out there. Boom, when he does, he shines like that. that I, I love the problem that we're having here because it's not a problem. And the fresh legs you talk about, week 14, week yep. 15, week yes. 16, you go, week 17. You, let's go. I, because I, as, you're, as you're talking about that, I'm thinking about back-to-back games against Tennessee and Cincinnati on the road in December. It's going to be a little chilly. Exactly. Maybe some bad exactly. weather. Then you get Pittsburgh at home right after that, another tough team. Even though you're going to be indoors, you're just like, you're getting into that December stretch. And if you got running backs who can beat the crap out of you, like those two guys, Grind you're feeling out. real yeah, good about you got, it. You got one guy that can just pound the ball, and you got the other guy that can Go hit on. that home yeah, run. Right. Like I say, we had the best of both worlds, and both those guys, you, you have very, you, you're very comfortable and you have a lot of confidence in putting either one of them back there. Right. Let either one carried the ball for 25 times or carry for five times. By the way, Zach Moss can hit the home run and Jonathan Taylor can pound the ball too. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. you can go the other way, way too on exactly. that. Best of both worlds. You guys are right. They're the opposite of what we said. They can also do that, yeah. you know, flip side yes. and grind them out, keep those legs churning. Can, can, or won't. I don't know if this is one that's going to fit in that category, but I called this. Not something like, I called this. i just saying, when I was leaving that stadium, that was one of the biggest wins in this franchise in the last three, four maybe years. Two and a half to four years, I'm saying. Because it was so big, it's a division game at home, and you are bouncing back by going to take complete control if you win in Jacksonville. And that's where I want to get to. Can this team, can they go 5-1 and one against the rest of the AFC South? Because that Texan game is going to mean something at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. We know that Tennessee game is. But if they can knock off Jacksonville, split with them, which is upcoming this week, we are in a driver's seat when it comes to this division, which we've never been in since, what, 2014? To me, this is, this is the, the pivotal game now. You've established yourself. The Colts over the last five weeks have, have established an identity that they're going to be in every game, and they're going to be the more physical team on the field in every game they're in. That's their identity. You, the, they're mm-hmm. really good on both sides of the line of scrimmage, O-line, D-line. you got a running back who can play really well. you got the franchise leader in tackles looking to break that record in Zaire Franklin. Like you <laughs> we'll got, get there. Boy, we're we're going to get boy. there. We, you, you got some just dudes up front. All right, so that's the engine of this team. That's a really good identity to have. Now can you go to Jacksonville, end that streak, Come out of it splitting with the Jaguars and sitting at three and one in your division through your first four games, going into a stretch where you then don't play the South again until December. Right. You can do that. You're feeling pretty good about your chances to compete in this division. The Jaguars are a good team. They have had some games where they've made some mistakes that have almost kind of tamped down. Like they, they are a really talented team, but they've made some mistakes. It drops in the end zone, fumbles, just stuff that. If they were to clean that up, they would be, you'd say, okay, that's one of the better teams in this conference. But the Colts are a team that doesn't make a lot of those mistakes so far. This is not a team that has turned the ball over much. This is a team that forces you to turn the ball over. They punch the ball out. They get stops on fourth and short. This team does not make a lot of mistakes. So are you going to have a a really talented team in Jacksonville that's made some mistakes versus a team in the Colts that is going to be physical and play mistake-free football? How does that play out on Sunday? I'm fascinated to see it. I agree. I think this is the big game right here. It's huge. This, this, this is the game. Can you, can you back up your win against Tennessee going down to Jacksonville and winning on the road in Jacksonville? That's going to be a big question mark right now. Can the Colts do it? I think they're capable of doing it. They can go down there and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars because I think they played Jacksonville very tough here early in the year. Unfortunately, I think when Jacksonville got that big punt return, got in good position mm-hmm. to go down there and score, I think that kind of changed things around. But I believe this team right now can go down in Jacksonville and give them a good fight because they're going to be physical. This team is this team is going to fight to the end. We saw that when they played the Rams. They came back from that 20 point, 23 point deficit and how they played Tennessee playing physical this past week. So I think it's a possibility they can win this division, but this is going to be a big game. This is going to be a big part of them winning the division, uh, 
by the end of the year if they go down and can win this game. I want to be the bad guy. Somebody's got to be the bad guy here. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I, somebody has to. You're going to play Jacksonville in Jacksonville. It's another rivalry that you have. Eight penalties. Eight penalties at home last week. Is that something that we should clean up? Because, J.J., anytime I hear the number eight and penalties, I know that's a lot of yardage yeah. that we're losing. Okay, I mean, the devil's advocate is the Colts took a couple of delay game penalties where they were trying to draw the Jags offside. Good one. There's That um, can account for a couple. So, okay, that's, you know, it's it's a couple. Yeah, there, there are some penalties that you would certainly want back. Um, but I to me, that it doesn't change that I think this Colts team plays pretty, you know, clean football for the most part. That they're not... They're not getting flagged for uh, operational penalties, right, right. like sloppy penalties. You're not seeing a lot of those. Like, you know, the OPI on Pittman, like, I think you, you're you going to live with that with Michael Pittman Jr. because you want him to be physical in the pass game. You want him to be, you know, and like the, the play he had later in the game on the little swing pass to Zach Moss, yes. where he was able to kind of, you know, hit the rub route on the linebacker and keep him away from Zach Moss while not doing it in an illegal way. Like, you're not going to keep Michael Pittman Jr. away from doing those things that you live with a couple OPIs, if that's what it means over the course of the season. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I get penalties. It happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it became a trend, that would be one thing. If it were sloppy penalties that show you're not prepared or you're getting tired out there, that would be one thing. But I, I'm not totally seeing it that way. I, I, I think, you know, they, they need to clean up the penalties, definitely. You know, I mean, I, I think of back to the game again. I think it's the Rams when EJ Speed had that penalty. Yeah, that, that, that yeah. was a killer. penalty. That's a killer. That's a killer. It kept the drive alive for them to go down. And I think they scored a touchdown on that drive. Uh, if I'm it was not the mistaken, the opening drive. Yeah, the opening hey, drive, need so. to win the penalty battle in Jacksonville yes. and need to win the turnover, turnover battle. battle. Yeah, I mean, those exactly. are two things that's coming up. You mentioned a guy that is taking literally the league by storm, <laughs> and this is can can or won't. Again, remember we're playing this fun game, and I'm bringing up Zaire Franklin. Can he lead this league in tackles at the rate that he's at? And JJ. Another, this kid's a Disney movie. I'm sorry. A walk yeah. on at Syracuse, team captain, a late trap in here, team captain, leader in the league. I mean, wonderful story that Zaire Franklin is. And now the whole league's talking about him. And one of the keynotes, and we got a lot of people to talk about, we just can't. But Zaire is shining on the defensive side. So absolutely can lead the league in tackles. But the, the other part of this, can he set an NFL record? Let's go. For tackles. Let's go. Bill, I want to tee you up on this one because you, you played in the era where. Guys are getting 200 tackles. There have only been three seasons where someone's had 200 tackles since that became an official statistic in 1987. Hardy Nickerson set the NFL record with 214 tackles in 1993. Jesse Tuggle is the only other player to have over 200 tackles in a season. He did that in 1990 and 1991. This is an era, Bill, as you know, where running the football was a lot more prevalent. Yes. It is... (laughs) setting an NFL record for tackles. Yes, it's a 17-game season, but teams throw it more. Um, bit of a challenge, but could absolutely why on do earth it. would you doubt Zaire Franklin could do anything at this well, point? I'm not going to doubt Zaire. I mean, you look at him, and you, you talked about him coming from uh, Syracuse, being a late-round draft pick, coming playing special teams, making his living playing special teams when he first got here. Worked his way up, did it the right way. Just, hey, look, each day I go out there, I'm going to work and work and get better. He gets better. Now he's one of the captains on the team. Of course, he was a special teams captain, but he's now a captain on the defense. Now he goes out there and just plays. And stuffs and st- King plays. Henry. I mean, you're talking stuffs. about – Stuffs. I, I love the King, King Henry <laughs> on the fourth down. Stuffs him oh. and then high steps to, mid- to midfield. That was what I'm talking about. All eyes around the NFL saw that play, saw what Zaire Franklin is. Oh, that's what you want. And that whole defense. You give the defense a lot of credit. You know, give uh, DeForest Buckner – Buck a shutting, great play shutting, on that, yeah. Shutting the tackle there and making a, a great play. You know, Dio out there holding the edge, keeping the Henry inside – to let Zaire Franklin and Defoe come up there and make that hit to stop Henry. So that was that was a big play. Big play by the defense. And of course the offense did a nice job of controlling the ball for seven minutes and going down there and getting a field goal. But Zaire Franklin, I would say I, I think he can definitely lead the league in tackles this year. I, I really believe that. I think he could definitely lead the league I love in tackles. It. Great story, he's, man. He's, 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 he's playing very well Great this story. year. Great story. So I went and I looked at it just from 2010 on, when the league has kind of really taken off in terms of being a passing league, mm-hmm. uh, the tackle leaders on a per-season basis, Foye Oluokan had 192 in 2021. Wow. He averaged 11.3 tackles per game. He also had 184 in 2022. Jordan Brooks from Seattle had that same total in 2022. Nick Bolton had 180 last year. And then Gerard Mayo had 174 in 2010. Wow. 
So you get the 17th game. That helps you a little bit. Yeah. But the fact that, I mean, Foyo Luakon getting 192 tackles, that's incredible. That's a lot. But he averaged 11.3 tackles per game. Zaire Franklin is averaging just shy of 14 tackles wow. per game right now. So we still got 12 games to go. That's a long season. But if he if he keeps a pace up of averaging a dozen tackles a game, he could be scraping that 200 mark if he he continues to play this well, way. He's not a surprise to us. We've no. seen this. And I mean, but I want to talk about pleasantly surprised on some some fronts that I want to get to. Zaire, you're not one of them. And I'm, I'm the reason I'm saying that is that <laughs> yeah. we know what you were doing. We saw you set the club record last yeah. year. I mean, obviously, and, and coming on this year like he is. But pleasantly surprised is the category. I'll start with you, Bill. Going up to the season, offensively, defensively, wow. where we're at three and two, this football team, where you've been pleasantly surprised where we haven't talked about before. Well, I, I will say this. The guy he didn't play the first game of the season, but after that he came back. We mentioned him earlier, Zach Moss. Just, just the way he's been playing lately. I mean, playing physical, playing hard. He's averaged 111 yards per game since he's been playing this year in the four games. Thanks. That's big. That's big for a guy that coming in, you were hoping, you know, JT he would be healthy. You start off the season, you know, give JT a blow. He's come in, picked it up, and say, hey, look, you know what? JT's out right now for whatever reason. I'm the guy. I'm going to be able to do the job. And he showed that he can do it. He showed that he could run between the tackles, be physical, get those tough yards, and also break the long ones we saw last week. And the offensive line, I think, mm -hmm. they love that. They love someone that's back there running the ball and running the ball very physical and being physical with them. So, I mean, Zach Moss, to me, I think he has surprised me. He didn't surprise me at his talent, but just his production thus far this year. You talk about the offensive line, Bill. The guy, the, I think in general – a lot of people are pleasantly surprised with the offensive line. Yeah. This is the whole plan all along, though. In the offseason, everyone's saying, oh, I, you know, Colts aren't adding to their offensive line. Go get a left tackle. Go mm. get a guard. You know, do something. The change was getting Tony Sperano wow. Jr. <laughs> that was the change. The same five starting offensive linemen that were in place for the second half of the 2022 season are in place right now. The only change, Tony Sperano Jr. Guess what? This is one of the best offensive lines in the NFL again with Tony Sperano Jr., leading the way. But I want to highlight one guy in here because I always kind of think of offensive lines. Your five is one, but it's a weak link system. If you have a weak link, you could have four pro bowlers and one guy who's going to get picked on every game. Will Fries. There you go. Credit to Will Fries. Nice. The season he's having right now. Coming into the year, I think if you're looking at it, you said, okay, last year, take pro football focus grades for what you will, but he had a 42.4 uh, pass block grade last season you know I don't know if he was as bad as that grade may have indicated but you're thinking okay that's probably your weak link this year 67.3 that Atta puts boy. him 53rd out of 164 offensive linemen with at least 150 snaps this hey. season so you're talking about that is not a weak link at no. all that is a solid player him. I love that right there too. right guard seventh round pick in 2021 you plug him in there he is playing solid football next to Ryan Kelly who is playing great football Quentin Nelson playing great football. Braden Smith, great football. Bernard Ryman, when he gets back from the concussion, he's been playing great football. Can we stay there? That's my pleasantly surprised. Let's go. That's two games Let's in a row it. for Blake Freeland. That's yes. a rookie out there. That's Bernard Ryman not being on the field for this rookie coming in and saying, hey, by the way, that big shiny jewel in back of you, we got to protect him. And I'm talking about Anthony Richardson. I know that wasn't the case, but it wasn't Blake Freeland's fault that he's out of this uh, the, well, the game this week. How about, but I, that's my pleasant surprise. How about the O-line depth in general? Yeah, that yes. was another thing coming yeah. into the season. Oh, they don't yeah, have any West, veterans back there. Okay. Blake West Freeland French. and Wesley French, French have stepped in. Both been fine. There it is. I love it. Totally right what there. you need out of your backups. <laughs> okay, don't forget, I got something for you listeners right here. Inside Football with Rick Venturi. It's coming up on the Colts Audio Network. Came out Wednesday. It's going to give you the blueprints for the Colts. To beat the Jaguars in Week 6, another episode of the official Colts podcast will land Thursday. Matt Taylor will be in here. Bill Brooks will be in here. And Casey Vallier will also be and here. And Dio Adangbo will be too. Dio Adangbo, the big man from West End down in Nashville, played at Vanderbilt. He will be up that. That's coming up in a couple of days from now subscribe to our youtube channel drop us a comment whether you like me or you hate me or these guys <laughs> on the couch let on the us couch. hear it or you have couch problems i'll be answering some listener calls <laughs> and uh, questions throughout the year and uh or excuse me i won't be but i'll be hearing them from that man yeah, mailbag gonna, I, i've been they I, will be he will be answering you and teeing off on me i'm sure if on, somebody yeah, comes yeah, yeah. on no, it. because last week on on the youtube yep. comments give us we, one we got we got, i mean we got some comments about the couch, ah, the couch. understandably it's, not comfortable. it's just not comfortable 
I'm I just was saying. I was flabbergasted at how many people agreed with your take on the couch. What what what, what was your take on the he couch? He doesn't like couches. I don't like couches, Bill. I, I'm not going to sit on the couch. I'm not a big couch guy. If you got a lawn chair, I'll bring it in from outside and throw it down in the living room. I'm fine on it. So no, couches, just, yes. no, no couches at home? No, yeah. I have my couch at home, but that's my couch. Okay. That's a jacket, bro. Yeah. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. There's okay. snot on that it's, jacket. It's broken. It's There's, broken yeah, in. It's broken it's, in. You know okay. what I'm saying? I think, the shoes I think, are up on there. I think my favorite comment was from the Sherman CFH. Gorman looks miserable today. I was. Also, was uh, sorry there. to at Josh Weekly thirteen sixty seven, dude. I'm three minutes in and I've heard nothing but couch talk. That's it for me. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry Josh. We're, back. we're, we're, so we're, you, so we're only need, at five we, minutes. So you're doing all these in the couch. All, the whole all, thing. All, Bill, I'm doing this, this. I'm trying this. this. I'm doing this. And this, and this. Uh, also, we got a, a J Rocks or nobody cares what you think about couches. But also, the Sherman CFH came back with the couch setup is whack. I'm with Gorman. Yeah, okay, on it, sir. Hey, you like our new sign? I love the sign. For the shoe behind us right here, the couch is, uh, by the way, people come in here and sleep on that couch on their lunch. No, they don't. It's also another reason. Honestly, that's a good idea. Edward Hayes, I just told on him on, yeah. Oh, Eddie Ball Cat comes back here. He puts the feet up right here. The guy who, uh, the the Ursay contest on Twitter, they come out of his ball cap. That's He sleeps out here for that? That's sometimes. Gotta be prepared for those contests. I'll always be in this chair. Don't let it out. That is, man. Don't leak it out. Out? Come on. Colts official prod. Bo- p- Colts official. I almost did it again. Colts official podcast brought to you by our <laughs> friends at Win Las Vegas. My favorite One bit, last by the thing. way, is that it is the official Colts podcast, it but is. you've called it the Colts, Colts official, official podcast, podcast, and I honestly don't want to correct you. Pod- Colts official podcast? It's the official Colts podcast. Why does that matter? I'm saying the same thing, just ah, in it, a different it, form, though. Does, doesn't matter. The official matter. podcast yeah. of the Colts. Yeah. Colts official podcast. I like the latter. I'm going to stay with that one. Down with OCP. (laughs) Speaking of ladder, more of those guys, less of me. And you can also get Instant Reaction, which is a great podcast, immediately following the game. That's these two right there on the couch, these two, talking about the Colts and whoever they played. Instant Reaction. Love it. JJ, anything closing out here this week? We're going down to the south. I know you're a big kayaker. I I want to find out if you're going to go and do some kayaking in the rivers of Jacksonville. Are you a kayaker? Yeah, big time. I never kayaked in my life. (laughs) I know you're a big kayaker. Kayaker. Okay, sure. I guess I'll have to go kayak. They have great waterways there in Jackson, but okay, they lead to the big lake. You know you, what I'm saying? You, you're so, going to come with me? Go no, kayaking? No, I'm in it, but snap <laughs> some pictures. Bill, anything in Jacksonville? Give us something. Oh, no, no. I, look, I go to Jacksonville. When I went to Jacksonville, I went to Jacksonville just because. Business. We're business. We're getting ready to play the, the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, and let's take care of business. They got that's alligators it. in those waterways? They do. That's Why are you trying to send me an alligator infested waterway, Gorman? I can waterway, see Gorman. you out there, though, just like, game. All right, game's coming up tomorrow. I got to get a few more of these miles in right are there. You, are you, if you do something, Dodge I won't alligators. be kayaking. No. Are you going up? You going to go golfing? Uh, maybe down there and golfing on a Saturday. Yeah, before yeah, we'll okay. see what happens. But right. we're just going to wait and see what the weather is and all that. But anyway, Colts fans, you can find out the latest from these two at JJ Stankovitz on Twitter and also at Colts.com to give you the latest and greatest news. Bill will look for you on the pregame, on the postgame as well. Yes, You're sir. looking at practices this week, breaking stuff down, and also I love Instant Reaction, that podcast that you and JJ do. So be sure to find out that all the information you need is on Colts.com. This is the Colts Audio Network. A lot of stuff that a lot of choose from, and a big thing. Thanks to everybody out there, Lair Overton, Matt Taylor, JJ, Casey Vallier, Bill Brooks, and I do nothing, but I appreciate you guys <laughs> listening to me in this new comfortable chair. Again, thanks to our friends at Win Las Vegas for JJ and Bill. I'm Jeffrey Gorman. We're doing it this week, headed south to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars and extend the AFC South lead. We'll talk to you next week.